Welcome back, my little pumpkins, to the science corner. You know, I actually don't really like people who say things like what the science says or science-backed workouts. But nonetheless, we are looking at some of the science behind blue light blockers. And is there any good or solid evidence or what does any of the evidence say in relation to the use of blue light blockers when you're trying to get better quality sleep? So before we get to the subject of the blue light blockers in relation to randomized control trials and interventions into people trying to sleep, first we need to have a little thought about why are we even looking at blue light or blue light blockers at all. So as you may or may not be aware, your circadian rhythm runs in a 24 hour cycle, plus or minus a few minutes, depending on what kind of person you are. And this is heavily regulated by the amount of light in your environment. So the circadian rhythm interacts and dictates kind of your activities, your wakefulness, your enthusiasm and what time you wake up and what time you go to sleep. Now it's a very complex mechanism. There's a host of hormonal cascades involved in the circadian rhythm. But the one we're most interested in today is your circadian rhythm and its relation to you going to sleep. Now you don't have any manual control of when you can go to sleep unless you're a Navy SEAL sleeping with your legs up apparently. But what you do have control over is the environment with which you place yourself in. Now, your circadian rhythm in your brain is controlled by the suprachiasmatic nuclei. So these are found in your hypothalamus. These are nuclei that essentially control the circadian rhythm in your brain. And they are influenced by the amount of light, what kind of light, and then some other hormonal practices or hormonal changes in your body. So the kind of light that gets to you. So they're not independent so these are heavily impacted by light now there is other aspects so serotonin and melatonin also play a role in regulating your circadian rhythm and interacting with these scn but in the case of the scn and the outside influences so this outside stimuli, the light that gets into our brain it comes in via our eyes it's been established that blue light seems to have the most preferential impact on our circadian rhythm and can negatively or positively impact our circadian rhythm throughout the day, and most notably when we're trying to get to sleep at night. So as a lot of you are aware, we are heavily surrounded by blue light. It's in our phones, it's in our energy efficient light bulbs, you know, it's in our computer screens. It's essentially everywhere around us. And one of the impacts, or one of the things we need to consider is how much is this blue light actually impacting our sleep? And is there anything we can do about it? So I went and looked, I was hoping to find some randomized control trials on the use of blue light blockers or essentially eliminating blue light. Now you might say, oh, and hang on a second, could, could we not just, before we even worry about blue light blockers, could we not just limit the amount of light getting into us at nighttime or pre-bed or several hours beforehand and get more in the morning? And the answer to that is you absolutely can. And that is what should happen. What really should happen is we would have no artificial lights, we would have no phones, we'd have no computer screens. And when it is evening time, yeah, if you live in, you know, south of northern Scandinavia or northern Canada or Alaska, or in the evening time, it slowly starts to get dark. Your circadian interacts, your circadian rhythm interacts and responds to the dimming light from the environment via the sunset. And then you may have some minor amount of light, for example, from a fire, which would eventually run out as well, would be very low level light. You would slowly begin the process approximately two hours or so before you'd actually end up getting to sleep so you begin the process of your body would begin the process i should say of getting you ready to go to sleep now why sleep is needed is still as of yet uh, or why sleep is even a thing is as of yet unrealized or undefined but sleep we must and so in these evening times pre-modern civilization we'd be sitting around the campfire the light would be dimming from the sunset we would be potentially telling some stories or doing some evening tasks. And as the light got dimmer, the firelight would be illuminating our way. And then eventually as the firelight dimmed and the sun went down, we would be in a position where hopefully we could go to sleep. And this is what should happen. There is no need for blue light blocking glasses because there is an extreme absence of blue light in our environment. So with that said, we don't live like that anymore, unfortunately. So a lot of people have begun to investigate, mostly in the last couple of years, relatively very recent in terms of the scientific endeavor is maybe in the last five or so years, we start to see an increase in the availability of blue light products and then some control trials into blue light. Now, before we get going, some sleep experts actually don't recommend blue light blockers. Now, of course, an expert in these fields are well established. I will always give way to those, but I wanted to look at what the science says and give you some of my own personal anecdotal evidence and thus allow you to 
make your own decision based on that and see if it has any impact on you. So what we really need in the kind of gold standard in these aspects is some well-controlled randomized control trials. Now we have a couple of those. Preferentially, these would be in healthy individuals. The use of randomized control trials and interventions in people with disorders isn't ideal. Now it's ideal for people with those disorders because if you get an outcome, you can take that positive action and implement it. But if you are a quote unquote relatively healthy individual, it may or may not skew the data and not give us beneficial results or beneficial data to interpret. So if we find and we've some data, some randomized control trials and quite a small number total between all the randomized control trials, but noticeable consistencies among them, which is the most reassuring thing. We have some data to take from this and there's some unique aspects and some notable consistencies among the randomized control trials. So let's have a look at some of these. I will quickly run over these studies. I'll leave them in the description. If you so wish to go investigate them and then you can figure out from yourself, is this something that might be beneficial? And if you're scientifically literate, which you may or not be, um, you can go look at those and then make some decision based off that. Now, of course, being scientifically literate does not guarantee an expertise in any field. And your absence of logical reasoning based on your lack of experience will could significantly impact how you read studies. So I am by no means a sleep expert. This isn't, of course, medical advice, but we can make some guesses. And when we're trying to make positive impacts as an individual, because as an individual, you are your own responsibility, I believe it is important to educate yourself as much as possible. So with that said, let's have a look at an investigation into healthy adults. Now, this is actually the one where we have some interesting data, but the outcome is that they say it doesn't impact sleep quality. But I still want to bring this up because I think it's important and I'll talk about why. So effect of evening blue light blocking glasses on subjective and objective sleep in healthy adults, a randomized control trial. So that's what we really want. We had 20 healthy adults, 11 men, and nine women between the ages of 32 plus or minus 12 years old, not 12 years old, plus or minus 32. 32 plus or minus 12, my God. So they only had a one week baseline of no glasses. They got some data from a wristwatch and subjective sleep analysis diaries, <laughs> and then a one week intervention. Uh, in general, these are done or actually with blue light blocking glasses and generally are amber glasses. Uh, so you, you can get clear coated blue light blocking glasses, but a lot of these studies are done with amber glasses and these are actually very cheap. So that is useful for you after. So essentially they had a one week adaption phase of just what their normal sleep looked like. These were self-reported poor sleepers. And then they got these blue light intervention randomized across the group. So very small again, so not incredibly significant when we're looking at billions of people who need to sleep and we all do this thing. Essentially what they got was, their conclusion was blue light blocking glasses did not improve objective measures of sleep quality or quality in healthy adults, sleep time or quality in adults. So the objective measures were from a wristwatch. These aren't really super useful in sleep studies. If you talk to sleep clinicians or sleep docateurs, these will use a lot more complex piece of equipment rather than the sleep watches. So wrist watches aren't something that are super useful when we're trying to get clinical data like this. But we do have some very interesting, and I think for you guys and for myself included, some interesting results from this. So blue light blocking reduced subjective sleep onset. So essentially reduced the time it took people to get to sleep. So I think that's so important. And they found that to be statistically significant and then reduce the number of awakenings in these people's sleep so compared to the control condition. Now, the reason they said, so you might be like, okay, so they got to sleep faster and they woke up less. So why, why would they be saying this? So they're going by their objective sleep data. So this is measurement of sleep was not significantly impacted. So in fact, our primary outcome variable of total sleep time tended to be paradoxically shorter in the blue light blocking condition for both subjective and objective. So it seems like they were asleep for less, but does this mean they were in bed for less? There's a couple of things and they'll admit this in their own study. If you go read the, the full study, they have a couple of limitations from the study. So one being the wrist application or the measurement of sleep. They were not in a controlled environment. They were at home, which can also be a benefit because you're going to get better quality sleep in a regular environment that you're used to and you feel safe in. So they had 
the risks limitation the, or the tracking method their objective tracking method was limited they were at home they didn't have alcohol caffeine or any sleep hygiene consistencies so both from the good and the bad we have to take this one a little bit of grain of salt while it is a randomized control study it is useful information there is some variables in this that we could not say for certain would not be or would be impacting sleep depending on which way we look at this but i want you to just take note that objective sleep onset and number of awakenings was reduced and we'll see this as a consistency across these other studies that we found that this was impacted and i think for a lot of people this in itself is very very useful i think this is super important so part of sleep is of course is the psychology of sleep and how good you felt you slept and how excited you are to sleep or how comfortable you feel sleeping you know you can no see yourself into poor sleep and if something can undeniably get you to sleep faster and awake less we can begin i think a good rhythm or a good cyclical cycle of getting to sleep better okay so let's look at another interventionist trial in people who are essentially healthy or considered to be healthy blue light blocking glasses a countermeasure for alerting effects of evening light emitting diode screen exposure in male adults so we had two weeks with 15 to 17 year old healthy old healthy teenagers the blue light blockers or clear lenses as control glasses were worn in counterbalance crossover design for one week each during the evening hours while using led screens afterwards participants went to the laboratory underwent an evening blue light enriched led screen exposure during which were wore the same classes as during the preceding week slivery melatonin subjective sleepiness and vigilant attention were regularly accessed and subsequent sleep was recorded polysomnography is the one you'd really want to be getting from what i understand for actual important sleep data so compared with clear lenses blue light blockers significantly attenuated led induced melatonin suppression in the evening and decreased vigilant attention and subjective alertness before bed visual scored sleep stages and behavioral measures collected the morning after were not modified conclusion blue light blocking glasses may be useful in adolescents as a countermeasure for alerting effects induced by light exposure to led screens and therefore potentially impede the negative effects modern light imposes on circadian physiology in the evenings so this is a little bit more of a valuable study because we had in clinical data we had more sophisticated monitoring equipment so we had more objective analysis of the results of the study now you'll hear again melatonin is one of the things we hear a lot about in regulation to sleep now the paradoxical thing is melatonin doesn't seem to be that useful taken exogenously to induce sleep in a lot of cases it doesn't actually make a statistically significant difference in the time it gets people to sleep and quality of sleep so endogenous melatonin as we remember it is one of the third variables that interacts with our scn their salivary melatonin was increased from the use of blue light blocking glasses or rather the correct phrase there it was not suppressed as opposed to increased so increased would maybe suggest if you use that kind of language that it is increasing beyond homeostasis or regular physiological levels but rather the led light is suppressing our normal levels of melatonin so what we should be achieving before sleep rather than you know drastically altering them above physiological levels melatonin replacement therapy if you will levels sports melatonin replacement levels if you will now let's look at one more because there is not a host of studies in relation to blue light blockers that are randomized control trials so it's important to look at the ones where we can take some data from them so wearing blue light blocking glasses in the evening advances circadian rhythm in patients with delayed sleep phase disorder an open label trial so delayed sleep phase disorder the delayed sleep phase disorder patients were instructed to wear blue light blocking amber glasses from 9 p.m to bedtime every evening for two weeks to ascertain the outcome of this intervention, we measured dim light melatonin onset and actiographic sleep data at baseline and after treatment. Nine consecutive DSPD patients participated in the study. So again, quite small, but a little bit of a niche environment, I suppose, in relation to people with a specific condition. Most subjects completed the treatment with the exception of one patient. The patients used amber lenses showed an advance of 78 minutes in the, or the dim light melatonin onset. Although the change was not statistically significant, so this is one of those things where you come back to the p-value, which we won't get into today, but notable nonetheless. Nevertheless, the sleep onset time measured by Actograph was advanced by 132 minutes after the treatment. Now, 132 minutes might sound like a lot to you. And again, this is in a case where people have uh, a disorder or a clinical issue in relation to sleep. So 
we mightn't see these large changes if we're in a healthier relationship with our sleep and rather we don't have an endogenous issue rather our outside stimulus in the environment is causing the issue with our sleep so their conclusion is this data suggests that these data that is plural that wearing amber lenses may be an effective and safe intervention with patients with dspd these findings also warrant replication in a larger patient cohort for control observations so of course again that nine is quite small and even among the total grouping we've still less than i think something less than 50 across those three studies that we've looked at now it's great that there's any interventionist studies in these so looking at these it certainly suggests that the use of blue light blocking glasses can have an impact on sleep measures now will they improve your sleep drastically if you have other issues there's remain to be seen there's a whole host of variables both physiological and psychological involved in sleep so the suggestion from this is they certainly have an A impact, but the conclusion among the scientific community, I think, would still be on hold. If you had a lot of sleep experts, I would bet they would probably say something along the lines of that blue light blockers aren't fully investigated yet. And I would have said the same even a few years ago because there's a very limited supply of these. But certainly something seems to be happening. In the meantime, what does that mean for you and I? Well, something happens to sleep. There's certainly an impact in sleep. Anecdotally, I am very susceptible to summertime light, as again, so this is completely natural. There's nothing wrong with you if you're also susceptible to light and being able to get to sleep. In Ireland, at the longest day, it'll be something, it'll be bright till something like 11 o'clock at night, and then the very next day, it'll be bright again at like half four ish. So, very short nights and very long, bright days. So this can actually slightly impact your own circadian rhythm if you're exposed to this light a lot during the day. So very, very useful in the morning. But if it's still available, that blue light and that sunlight at night, and it's very bright. Like we're talking very bright up until like 11 o'clock before it starts to get dark. It's actually kind of surprising, I think, if you're not used to it. You know, if you're closer to the equator, for example, where it might get dark a lot earlier. So in the summertime, it's something I'm very susceptible to. Quality of sleep would always improve for me the more winter we get because then it's bright for like less than like seven hours a day and it's dark most of that day. So it's very, very dull. So quality of sleep then goes up drastically for me. So it's always something I've been aware of. Now, I'm not talking about full insomnia from the sleep, but rather it's just it is a notable impact in comparison to the changing of the seasons. So blue light blocking glasses are something I've tried. Last year, I tried amber glasses and you'll see in a lot of these studies that amber glasses are used and these will perf perfect. And these will perfectly block the blue light in relation to what you're trying to get them to do. The one thing, however, stopping me from really using these blue light blocking amber glasses is the fact that I just didn't enjoy wearing them. It was very awkward to wear them for several hours, uh, to wear them for, you know, it's just unpleasant. But a lot of times these are safety glasses and you can get them incredibly cheaply and they'll do the job for you as well if you want to try this out. You can get them for 10, 12, 15 euro cheaper again if you work in a factory and you just steal them from your factory. But these kind of safety glasses with amber tinting in them will do the job. And I just didn't enjoy wearing them. Recently, a few weeks ago again, I decided, look, it's summertime, well, somewhere in Ireland, and I got a more expensive pair of blue light blocking glasses, but they have a clear lens. And honestly, the difference it makes is very significant for me personally on an anecdotal level it's reassuring as well that there is some evidence in this so getting to sleep a lot smoother and any amount of awakenings on average six out of seven nights will be zero awakenings for me uh, during the summer so even though i have blackout blinds and i feel like i've relatively good sleep hygiene i'm pretty consistent with sleep time and i don't use caffeine the light still impacts me in relation to my sleep quality and so the use of these blue light blocking glasses has certainly made a difference and is very impactful as noticeable from the first night. Now, you could say, is this not placebo? And I would say very possibly. Now it looks like it's not placebo going by the limited, but certainly useful evidence here. Ultimately for me, it doesn't matter because even if it is placebo, then I'm still getting good sleep and unawakened sleep and I feel psychologically happier about my sleep. Now, finally, to make a, a long story longer, the is filters on your phones and there is filters on your screens and software it'll on most phones especially android phones from what i can see will all have like a blue light filter a lot of the newer ones on your phone if you want to do it it's very very simple for a software to decrease the admittance of that blue light you'll see a lot of them will turn orange the problem with this is though if you're in you know countries like ireland where and a lot of you are where it stays very very bright to late or even you know, you're surrounded by lights in your house and you're surrounded by your TV, your TV won't have it. 
it looks kind of weird to look at your phone. So while it is useful to have it, it doesn't really solve the problem in practicality. So once again, just to kind of sum this up, absolutely could just turn off all the lights in your house and block all the lights. And that's probably what you should do. And then you should keep it dark all night as well. So one of the issues when you get to sleep, if the light is still coming into the room, it will impact the quality of sleep and it will impact your quality of REM sleep from what I'm aware. So you need to have a dark room as well because you'll obviously take off those glasses before you go to sleep. But even though I take them off, you have blackout curtains, some of the light still gets into the room, but it still is positively impacted because I've began the process. However, I will be, of course, trying to improve that sleep hygiene ultimately because sleep for training and life is so important. To conclude, blue light blockers do something to your sleep. Will they improve your sleep quality? Again, it's too subjective, too many variables. I don't think you're an idiot. Or I don't think you're chasing rabbits if you go by blue, blue light blockers or BLBs and see what they do to your sleep. I don't think you are chasing uh, a fairy tale or I don't think you're being sold a lie. However, I would say, you know, don't spend your hard earned money on really expensive ones yet. Because these are so small, there could be any number of changes and individual variances on these where blue light markers might make no difference to your sleep. We have no idea. But I think if you have trouble with your sleep or you'd like to improve your sleep, I think it's certainly worth a go. Worst thing that happens, they don't improve your sleep, you don't wear them and you've lost a few euro. Uh, best thing that happens, you get better quality of sleep and it's a very simple process to keep going with. You don't have to buy the clear lenses. You can simply go get the amber ones, safety glasses. You can get them on Amazon for like 15 euro and you know, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. So I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a different video. If you did get all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. This is probably going to be north of 20 minutes of me talking about light getting into your eye and your sleep. However, I would encourage you as a, as as just in general, better quality sleep is super important. Like it's so important for your mood, your physiology, fat free mass, fat loss, your how good you feel about yourself, just a variety of things, stress, so many things. It's so important to get good sleep. So I'd really encourage you to get your best quality sleep hygiene. And if you're training a lot, you have to be getting good sleep. It's really important. So please look after your sleep and we, uh, we'll leave it there. I appreciate you listening to me talking about this and I hope you get some benefit out. And if someone does go like use blue light blockers, let me know in the comments. I'd be very interested to see what other people say. And in the future, if someone does go get blue light blockers because of this video, let me know how it goes for you. I'd be very interested to see. So remember, be careful with your hard earned money. There might be something here and it looks like it, but as yet, I don't think we can conclusively say anecdotally, I find it great and we will, we'll leave it at that.